This legendary brand evokes various associations among historians and enthusiasts. For some, it recalls the early Milago Florio races in Brescia, where Alfredo and Ernesto Israti first appeared as the creators and pilots of some of the best Formula One racing cars of the Golden Age. For others, the name Maserati is associated with outstanding GT cars of the 1960s to 1980s, more practical than their crowned competitors from Ferrari. And of course for others, it is a symbol of prestige and power embodied in luxurious modern models like Quattroporte, Ghibli and Gran Turismo. However, regardless of the associations people have when they hear the name of this famous brand, it's important to remember that Maserati is not just a brand, it is above all an incredible story and a big family. The story of Maserati began when Rodolfo Maserati, working as a locomotive driver, married Carolina Lozzi in 1880. Over the next 18 years, they raised seven boys. Tragically, one of them, Alfieri, died in infancy. However, the family continued to grow, and each of the seven Maserati brothers made their own contribution to the history of the automotive brand. Starting small, the eldest son of the family was already working at a small bicycle manufacturing company at a young age. Carlo, who loved cycling, dreamed of a bicycle that could move itself. He assembled a single-cylinder engine from drawings in textbooks and installed it on a bicycle frame, starting to participate in bicycle races. Gradually, he improved his homemade engine until he set a speed record of 50 km per hour. Carlo's talent was noticed, and he was recruited by Fiat as a test pilot. There, his passion for speed and mechanics only grew stronger. At that moment, an apparently absurd idea popped into his head. To build the first car. What followed? Carlo secluded himself in his garage for six months and began assembling his dream from scrap materials. This very car, with a single-cylinder engine and a wooden chassis, became the very first model of the future Maserati brand. However, at that time, nobody suspected it. Even after he assembled it, Carlo continued to refine his creation to perfection, utilizing his knowledge, skills, and the available resources. Simultaneously, Carlo worked as a mechanic and a test driver for the Isotta Fraschini racing team. By then, he was already 26 years old, but he didn't waste any time there either. During races, he had to replace the low-voltage ignition system breaker several times. With his engineering ingenuity, he managed to resolve the issue by switching to a high-voltage ignition. Thanks to his cleverness, within a year, Carlo became the managing director of a company producing automotive accessories, a position he held for several years. However, his ultimate dream of creating his own cars, which would capture hearts, remained just that, a dream. To realize this dream, Carlo needed to save money and scout for a piece of land or an old factory to buy and open his own company. Carlo was not one to give up easily. For several years, he denied himself many things until finally, an opportunity arose to purchase an old pharmaceutical factory. Together with his brother, Ettore, he converted it into a facility for manufacturing high-voltage ignition systems. They offered to replace 6-volt ignitions with 12-volt ones to anyone interested. It seemed like step by step all his dreams were coming true. However, despite Carlo Maserati's talent as an engineer and manufacturer, he couldn't bring many of his creative ideas to fruition. At the age of 29, like many of his contemporaries, he fell ill with tuberculosis. In the early 20th century, this disease was incurable. And with that, the first chapter of the company came to an end. But it was far from the end of the story. In 1910, Carlo's business was taken over by 23-year-old Alfieri, seven years earlier, on Carlo's recommendation. At the age of 16, Alfieri had joined Isotta Fraschini's company. He managed to master many mechanical skills and also participated in auto racing. In 1908, Isotta entrusted Alfieri with the management of the team's car and he finished 14th in the Grand Prix of miniature cars known as Voitures. Despite his car's carburetor breaking down, Alfieri's mechanical skills impressed Isotta Fraschini and he was joined by Bindo and Ettore. Alfieri began working as a mechanic for the team while simultaneously developing his skills as a driver. In 1912, representing the Vaughan Tiny Company of the United States and Britain, the 25-year-old Alfieri was appointed head of the customer service department at Isotta Fraschini in Bologna. 
This career move allowed him to believe in his own organizational skills, and he decided to start his own business. An office space was rented in the old part of Bologna, laying the foundation for the first headquarters of Societa Anonima Officine Alfieri Maserati. The company was officially registered on December 14, 1914, and just five months later, World War I broke out. Alfieri, along with his brothers Torino and Ernesto, was called to the battlefield. Only Ernesto, who was 17 at the time, remained in the office, attending evening classes at the Technical Institute of Bologna. I won't dwell on the war since there was nothing good about it, thankfully. After a few years, Alfieri returned from the war and the family business did not perish along with hundreds of thousands of soldiers. Coming to his senses, Alfieri, along with Ernesto, began working on the construction of ignition candles. In 1918, he patented a new invention that revolutionized the automotive world. A new type of spark plug with mica insulation, which allowed for more consistent engine performance. However, the three Maserati brothers, Alfieri, Bindo and Ernesto, never forgot about their older brother Carlo's dream. After some time, they began working on creating the family's first car. At the time, Bindo was working at Isotta Fraschini, while Mario had no connection to automobiles as he was an artist. However, Alfieri entrusted Mario with designing the logo for the Maserati automotive brand. In his opinion, the emblem should reflect the characteristic symbol of Bologna, the trident, a statue of Neptune in Piazza Maggiore, embodying energy and power. Alfieri wanted the family car to embody these qualities, and Mario was able to realize his brother's vision, and the logo was born. Now the task was to create the car. As I mentioned earlier, Alfieri Maserati participated extensively in races. Although the racing results were not exceptional, they provided experience for creating a genuine new car. They didn't invent anything new, and followed the path taken by many of my characters, gaining the support of sponsors. In 1925, the brothers acquired 10 Diato 30 cars, and soon after, the first Isotta Type 26 was born. Several modifications were made based on this car, the 26B, 26M, and 26R. The base version of the car was equipped with a 1.5-litre eight-cylinder engine, producing 120 horsepower with a top speed of 200 kilometers per H. But even this was just an intermediate stage. After several victories in speed races with the Type 26, it was only then that Europe started talking about Maserati. It was on this car that Ernesto exceeded the speed threshold of 167 kilometers per H and became the champion of Italy in 1927. The Israeli brothers decided to concentrate their engineering potential on racing cars production of the Type 26 was increased as victories with it popularized the car brand and created a queue of eager buyers. 27 cars were produced with plans for more, but as often happens, plans didn't materialize. Alfieri was involved in a serious accident where he lost a kidney. Despite significant victories in the subsequent years, such as setting a world record in Cremona with a speed of 246 kilometers per H, and receiving the title of Italian hero for Olivieri two years later, the family faced a heavy blow. Alfieri succumbed on the operating table at the age of just 44, with many plans left unfulfilled. What happened next? Ernesto and the remaining brothers, Torino and Bindo, stepped up. Bindo, the eldest of the surviving brothers, became the chairman of the automotive company, while Ernesto assumed the role of chief technologist and designer, engineering cars and engines. Soon the company introduced the new V5 type, which made a successful debut. The brand continued to thrive, despite the challenging economic situation at home and abroad, and the departure of Alfieri. It was Ernesto who managed the racing cars, achieving victories in competitions. He was the first in Europe to use power-assisted brakes. Meanwhile, the 8CM models won legendary Tazio Nuvolari, collaborating with the Maserati brothers as a partner. However, the brothers' efforts, whose focus was primarily on automobile production, since Mario was dedicated to art, didn't lead to success in the end. Maserati was on the brink of bankruptcy. Being a talented engineer and innovator is one thing, but building a successful business is another matter entirely. In 1937, the brothers made the decision to sell a controlling stake in the company 
to the family of the famous Italian entrepreneur Adolfo Orsi. His empire spanned from steel foundries to agricultural equipment. Ernesto, Torino and Bindo signed a contract with Orsi, effectively becoming ordinary employees under new management. According to the terms of the contract, they were obliged to work under the new leadership for another 10 years in two separate companies. Orsi Group Officine, Alfieri Maserati for the production of racing cars and Fabrica Candele Maserati for the production of spark plugs. The headquarters of both companies remained in Bologna. It is not precisely known what the exact amount of the deal was, but it was clear that the Maserati brothers became wealthy after selling the controlling stake. This likely suited them well. Following this, Orsi successfully managed the company's finances, but refrained from involvement in technical matters in which he lacked expertise. Freed from external pressures, the Maserati brothers were able to return to their calling, racing. The new management decided to narrow the company's specialization and focus solely on producing racing cars. In 1939, World War II began, but this period also marked a triumph for Italian cars in the USA. In 1939 and 1940, American Wilbur Shaw twice won the Indianapolis 500 race, driving the Israeli 8 CTF, known as the Boyle Special. Since then, no car from other manufacturers has taken first place in American races. By the start of World War II, Maserati had left Bologna at Orsi's request, who wanted to concentrate all business operations in one region. The Maserati factory was relocated overnight, but due to the war, the production of racing cars had to be temporarily suspended. Instead, the company focused on producing spark plugs and other items critical for the military. It wasn't until early March 1946 that the prototype of the first Grand Tourer from Maserati was unveiled at the Geneva Motor Show, named the A6A in honor of Alfieri, with six inches denoting the number of cylinders. This project had been initiated by Ernesto Maserati even before the brothers had definitively left the company. As for cars, the originality of design was immediately recognized by the public in 1948 at the Turin Motor Show, when Maserati showcased its first model, the A6500. The style, conceived by Pininfarina, received widespread acclaim. The racing version, Maserati A6 JCS, driven by Alberto Ascari, secured several victories in races. Maserati's victory in the 1946 Grand Prix of Nice with the 4CL model held significant symbolic value. Following this immense success, Ernesto, Torrio and Bindo Maserati decided to leave the company and return to Bologna. Their 10-year contract with Orsi had ended, and despite no issues with Orsi, they were tired of constant struggles with labor unions and opted to leave the company they had founded. In 1947, the brothers established a new firm, Oscar, which, albeit with limited success, focused on producing racing cars. Meanwhile, Maserati continued its development without any family representatives. In 1950, Maserati entered Formula One. Although its cars did not yet meet F1 standards, they showed potential. However, internal tensions within the company by the late 40s did not contribute to the development of racing cars. In 1952, new F1 rules were introduced allowing cars with a maximum engine capacity of two liters. While the new formula opened up opportunities, it also intensified competition. In 1954, the new single-seater Maserati 250F won Formula One races in Argentina. By 1957, equipped with a powerful and reliable six-cylinder engine, the 250F enabled the legendary Fangio to secure his fifth world champion title, the last for Maserati. By 1958, the racing scene no longer interested the Orsi concern. One of the Orsi brothers announced Maserati's withdrawal from motorsport. From then on, the company's efforts were redirected towards producing road cars. Thus, the racing potential of Maserati cars materialized in two new bestsellers released successively. The first road model, Maserati 3500 GT, became the company's first family model and the first car in Italy to feature a fuel injection system. It was developed under the guidance of Chief Engineer Giulio Alfieri, who played a pivotal role in the development of Maserati's racing and road cars in the 1950s, 60s and 70s. The car's body was designed by Touring of Milan, presenting a four-seater, two-door sports coupe. 
Later, a convertible variant, the Spider, was released. Despite the shift to stamping panels instead of manual metalworking, the quality and restrained design characteristic of Touring's creations remained intact. The car was produced until 1964, with a total of 1983 units sold, primarily to affluent customers. Among them were Prince Rainier III of Monaco, Anthony Quinn, Albert Sordi, and many other well-known wealthy and famous individuals. Interestingly, it was thanks to the Maserati 3500 GT that the company managed to quickly recover from the difficult situation that prevailed in the automotive industry at the time. There were even talks of Maserati facing bankruptcy. However, the brand is now thriving. At that time, Maserati still had a small but valuable reserve of V8 engines for racing cars, particularly the 450S. This prompted the company to create the 5000 GT. The debut of this new car took place at the 1959 Turin Motor Show. The vehicle achieved truly remarkable speeds. In one instance, during a test drive with a company test pilot, a journalist was shocked to see the speedometer needle reach 280 km per h on a regular highway. Such performance from the Maserati 5000 GT astonished the journalist, who had never experienced a Maserati before. At that time, the Maserati 5000 GT was competing with Ferrari 512 models and was sold at a high price point. The first unit was acquired by the Shah of Iran, while the rest were purchased by elite members of society who were undeterred by the steep cost. Production of the Maserati 5000 GT continued until 1964. Today, this car gathers enthusiasts at retro exhibitions and is highly prized among collectors. In the early 60s, Maserati cars stood out significantly compared to other prestigious brands due to their power and speed. However, they lacked the luxury and comfort that would attract a wider audience. This led the company's management to develop and introduce new improved high-speed sedans, namely the Sebring, Mistral and Quattroport. These cars retained Maserati's dynamic performance and handling, while offering luxury and comfort comparable to Rolls-Royce or Bentley. Despite being priced higher, the desire of the Orsi brothers to move away from the automotive industry eventually led to the sale of the struggling Maserati company to Citroën in 1968 for a reported $54 million. Although Adolfo Orsi retained the nominal position of president, the management approach shifted under Citroën's ownership. Production accelerated with up to two cars produced daily. The new owners maintained the company's focus on developing luxurious and high-performance vehicles. However, by the mid-70s, the energy crisis engulfed the world, and in 1975, Citroën suffered massive losses, leading to the decision to close the Maserati factory. Despite these challenges, the legendary brand was not completely doomed. The company was saved when it was acquired by the Italian State Development and Assistance Institute, led by the renowned constructor and racer Alejandro De Tommaso. De Tommaso, who had a keen interest in the company's history, brought a fresh strategy to Maserati, aiming to compete with European giants like BMW and Mercedes-Benz. Under his guidance, the company shifted from mass production to focusing on a niche market. The first result of this strategy was the Quattroport, which essentially utilized Maserati engines with slight modifications. Despite initial challenges, including rushed production, the Quattroport found success, becoming the official presidential vehicle for the Italian Republic. Additionally, a more powerful version, the Royale, was introduced in 1986 and remained in production until 1990. This remake proved to be a hit, further solidifying Maserati's position in the premium car market, catering to Italy's elite who sought a true Italian thoroughbred. But that was just the beginning of Maserati's resurgence. Following this came the triumph of the Biturbo, which visually resembled a scaled-down Quattroporte. As the base model of the Biturbo series, it was relatively affordable yet retained all the advantages of Maserati. This two-door sedan featured twin turbos and a new two-litre six-cylinder engine. The Biturbo series also included roadsters, coupes, convertibles and four-door sedans, which enjoyed considerable success in Europe. In fact, their success was so overwhelming that in 1984, American automotive giant Chrysler acquired 15.6% of Maserati. The Biturbo proved to be a highly successful model, 
with over 35,000 units produced in various configurations. Some of these models can still be seen on roads in the USA and Europe, commanding high prices. The introduction of the Shamal model marked Maserati's return to using V8 engines, reviving the tradition of naming cars after famous wins. From 1993 to 1995, Fiat Auto, the giant conglomerate, acquired over 90% of Maserati's shares. This marked the beginning of a new era in the celebrated Marcus history. In 1994, the first fruits of Fiat's new management were unveiled, including the new Quattroporte, designed by Gandini and powered by a Biturbo engine. Engineers at Maserati then created the unique Ghibli Cup sports car, which still holds the record for the highest horsepower per litre ratio, producing 330 horsepower from just a 2-litre engine. No serial production car has surpassed this figure to date. In 1997, Fiat Auto transferred the production of Maserati cars to Ferrari, a partnership that lasted until 2005 and brought significant success to both companies. Luca di Montezemolo, the president of Ferrari, envisioned Maserati as producing grand tourer cars, luxurious and aggressive with classic forms, either four-seaters or two-seaters. Despite some setbacks, such as financial crises and reliance on Biturbo-based models, with Ferrari's support, Maserati managed to create a new coupe model. However, there was a nuance here. Initially named Mistral, the company discovered that this name was already owned by another manufacturer. Consequently, it was renamed the 3200 GT, following the model of the 3500 GT from 1957. Around $40 million was invested in the factory for the production of the 3200 GT. While the body painting was done in Maranello, the design of the new model was entrusted to the company Ital Design, which created a masterpiece with smooth, rounded contours, blade headlights under transparent covers, and sleekly curved radiator grille reminiscent of classic sports cars. The distinctive rear lights echoed the curves of the body, and the steel body was complemented by tubular subframes for engine and suspension mounting. The four-seater cabin appeared more modest compared to previous models where natural leather and wood were abundant. The 3200 GT model emerged as a serious competitor to all leading representatives of the supercar market in the late 1990s. It rivaled the Porsche 911 and Jaguar XKR in terms of performance and interior space, as well as the pricier Aston Martin DB7. Interestingly, this was the last Maserati car based on a modified turbo series engine. In 2011, Maserati introduced its first crossover concept car, the Kubang. The Kubang was a conceptual vehicle that replaced its predecessors while remaining true to its heritage, marking a path to a future of technological superiority that cares for the environment, as stated on the company's official website. As for statistics, in 2014, Maserati sold 3,648 cars. Production of the Levante crossover began in the first half of 2016, marking the company's first foray into the SUV market. Since 2020, all Maserati models have been hybrids or electric vehicles. Additionally, the company has embarked on the development of autonomous driving technologies. According to Wikipedia, the company employs only 1,411 people at its factory in Italy, which, considering its automotive brand status, is relatively low. Maserati is a joint stock company headquartered in Modena, Italy, and is owned by Stellantis NV, a transnational corporation formed in 2021 through the merger of the Italian-American automaker Fiat Chrysler Automobiles with the French company Group PSA. Stellantis NV owns 14 automotive brands, including Maserati, laying the first brick in the company's construction back in 1914. Though the Maserati family is no longer involved with the company, history remembers to whom it owes these wonderful automobiles, so, my friends, that's all I wanted to share today. I hope you're not too tired. I'd appreciate it if you supported the video with a like. Take care of yourselves until next time.